Greetings my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today my topic is the bronze serpent. My brothers and sisters, we all have seen in the pharmacies where you find uh, a pole where you have this bronze serpent which has been taken from this book of uh, Numbers, from biblical book of Numbers. So today we'll see from how this bronze serpent has been a kind of indication and how it was misunderstood by later generations and then it was worshipped and that we see it very common even now happening how our knowledge given by God has been seen as human wisdom and now people are talking about innovations digital technologies Whatever they create, research, going to Mars, they all say it is all by human wisdom. God is forgotten. But if we look at this scene of how God gave this bronze serpent and he instructed Moses to make a bronze serpent and put it on a high pole and those people who were bitten, if they were to look at it, they would be healed. Let's see in the scriptures and see the story how this bronze serpent comes in the lives of the Israelites. In Numbers chapter 21 verses 8 to 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a stand alone and a, sta and a standard and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it, he will learn. So just to give the background of this story is the Israelites, they are coming, they are relieved from the slavery from Egypt and they are coming. They keep traveling in the desert 40 years. But then God wanted them to understand the words from the book of Deuteronomy that man lives not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from God. So. God wanted them to learn. But then these people are so used to the ways of living in, in Egypt, eating all those leeks, all those pomegranates and all those good food. And, and here in the desert, they find nothing except what God gave them at that point was manna and quail. So they wanted to have more food, etc. They were used to that food. But then they start cursing God. With whatever difficulty they had, they first started complaining and then they started cursing God. And we see that even in our today's present modern world. Whenever there is an uh, event, uh, a national disaster happens, people question where is God? Why is he silent? My brothers and sisters, God has a purpose for everything. We, our purpose, we are only creation, is creation, creatures. He is in control and we are not. So if he does something, he's got a purpose. Through that purpose, he will make us come out of it, belly, come out of it victoriously. God even sent his own son to die for us. Did he not love his son? God has a purpose. When he has a purpose, we can't question. We should only thank God for whatever situation we are. But here we find they're complaining. So once they start complaining, God sends these fiery serpents to go and bite everybody. People and whoever was bitten were, were dying. If we compare this scene with our present times, and also the different times which happen in the history of our, of our mankind. Today we see we are having this pandemic, COVID-19, which is just spreading havoc everywhere. It makes somebody, some person might even think, oh, why don't we put a stand pole with a coronavirus symbol on that and whoever looks at it can live. So false prophets can come and do that. But all we have to do is to only thank God. Even 
it came into my thought as well. Oh yes, because at that point in time, Moses was instructed to put a standard, a fiery bronze serpent, so that the person who was bitten, when he looks at it, will be healed. But in our present times, if we were to do that, or, or just thinking about it, but then, when I reflected on that, God's love is plenty. God, Jesus Christ, he came down and he showed us to love our Father God and our fellow human beings. When he has given that love, we need to only seek his love and thank him. If it is our own lives which we are going to pass away because of this COVID-19 pandemic, we need to thank God. Because when we die, we are going to be with him. When we are alive, we are going to serve our fellow human beings. So, the bronze serpent came into existence because of complaining and cursing God. So, we can't complain, we can't curse God. We have seen in the past, in the history, how people have suffered because of complaining and because of cursing God. And in our present times as well. I'm sure if persons who do not acknowledge God, who do not believe in God, God has told them, yes, you have your free will, you do whatever you want. And that's about it. But if you come and seek me, then you will find me. And whatever, when we seek him, we will just surrender everything to him. Our lives, our families, our work, everything to him. Whatever comes, we surrender to him. Lord, let your will be done. And that's what our Lord Jesus taught us. Now in 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 4, we see that this is a time of a few years have passed and you know, two, three generations and you know, two, two generations, yeah, probably it's only before 40 years or uh, King's time, the time of Kings. He removed the high places and broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah. He also broke pieces of bronze serpent that Moses had made for until those days. The sons of Israel burned incense to it and it was called Neshu, Nehushatan. So my brothers and sisters, what happens is over a period of time, if we are not aligning ourselves with the word of God, then we start worshipping different gods. And here is a case where the people have started worshipping the bronze serpent, burning incense, what is usually done only to our creator God, the, the, the menorah the seven uh, lampstand to give it to their place it in front of the holy of holies the ark of the covenant here we find people burning incense to the bronze serpent so therefore he comes king ezekiel king ezekiel he comes and he removes all those pillars for what's been placed placed and then he sets up he makes sure that people do not worship and get lost in that worshipping that bronze serpent. But if you look at bronze serpent, we find that there are 157 instances and snake in 44 instances. So the bronze is a metal always associated with judgment. And that's the reason Moses was uh, given that task of putting that bronze serpent. And also it could be shaped up well, you know, it's a, it can bear high temperature and it could be shaped up. But here we find King uh, pulling down all those things because people started worshipping and they were calling, giving a name also to the God, Nehushtan. Now in uh, John chapter 3 verse 14 to 15, we have once again the mentioning of the bronze serpent. As Moses lifted up the serpent, servant, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in will in him have eternal life. So my brothers and sisters, here is in the Gospel of John, who says, just like Moses lifted that bronze serpent, putting it in a standard, 
Jesus is lifted on the cross. And whoever looks at him in the cross, that person is saved because of his redeeming power. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But merciful God, we become also the merciful people when we look at him. So we can tell all our accusers, all the people who trespass us, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So here we find the bronze serpent, people looking at the bronze serpent and getting healed. But here we are looking at Jesus and our souls are being saved. We are thanking God for that redemption, for that crucifixion Jesus suffered for us. We need to thank him and love him and be prepared to sacrifice our own lives for him so that we also are resurrected to be with him for eternity. John chapter 12 verse 32, Jesus says, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The Gospel of John chapter 12 verse 32. When he resurrects, when he is put up on that cross and then he dies, with that teaching he has given us, he will draw everyone to him. Irrespective of the people's race, color, nationality, all corners of the world. My brothers and sisters, today if you see you have believers in Jesus Christ in all corners of the world. He has drawn everybody from every tribe. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Because we are not looking at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. My brothers and sisters, there are so many questions posed by all the people who do not have faith in God, who question God. The atheists say there is no God, the curse God. But the ones who believe in the word of God, who believe in his redemptive power, we have to answer them in kindness and in humility, with love and in love. And I tell the same words Jesus spoke from the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So they may not, they are looking only at the visible things. But we got to look beyond that visible thing. We got to close our eyes to the visible world open the eyes of our heart to the invisible world and then pray for them. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 God made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him would become the righteousness of God. God has been so gracious so merciful, so loving, that even he sent his son to die. We all as human beings have come to live in this world, but God sent his son to die. Now, we are here, we want to be with him. We will surrender our lives to him, surrender our free will to him glorify him and be with him forever when this pilgrimage this journey on this planet earth is finished so Jesus was true holy but then he was with no sin but he suffered death and he didn't even answer even he as, as human because Jesus was both human and he was fully divine and fully human. In his humanity he didn't even sin but even for without being sin even in its human form he was put to death, cruel death because God's plan was that to redeem us because of his love because of his 
his light. He wanted to give that way, the truth, the light to every human person on this planet, past, present, and the future as well. Now Acts chapter 4 verse 12 and this and there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among people by which we must be saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. This is Peter. Peter who has got that leadership role bestowed on him by Lord Jesus Christ. To train him he went through different phases. All those impulsive actions of Peter, God's revelation to him, the transfiguration, the healing of his mother-in-law, that Jesus was the healer, and the many miracles Jesus did, and making him walk in the water in the Sea of Galilee. Even after all those things, Peter denied Jesus three times. He said, I know not, I do not know him. But Jesus comes back. He doesn't point finger at him, but rather he says, do you love me? Feed my lamb. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my lamb. Take care of them. So he writes to us after going through that huge transformation. There is no other name which is powerful than the name of Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful revelation of Peter to us. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7. John the Baptist calls the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were visiting as brood of vipers. So the snake, the serpent is the ultimate enemy connected in this physical earth. So that's what Matthew chapter 3 verse 7 the John the Baptist calls the people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are know the law but they don't want to reveal that law to the commoners. So you brood of vipers, they want to talk about everything but deep within them they are not obeying the law. They are not giving that mercy giving that love, giving that kindness, giving that, that humility. They always wanted to be in a big group, powerful. They want to post that. So that's why John the Baptist calls them brood of vipers. Matthew chapter 23 verse 33. Jesus also uses this imagery of serpents. You generations of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of fire? He calls it Gehenna. So, the serpent which God cursed in the garden of Gethsemane after the serpent tempted Eve to eat and become disobedient to God. That spiritual death is now finished when Jesus came into this planet earth, suffered on Mount Calvary and he rose again from the tomb. Now there is only the empty tomb. So Jesus has conquered everything. The serpent, the death, the destruction, the evil, everything Jesus has conquered. But the sting of death would, we can always ask the sting of death, where is your sting? But Jesus wants us to carry our cross. Go through all the sufferings without complaints but thanking God for giving us that opportunity to go through that suffering just to share at least a little bit of his suffering to be with him and be one with him after this physical journey ends. Thank you my brothers and sisters. Let's praise God and thank God for Lord Jesus. Bye now.